All right, about to unbox my book and see my book for the very first time. So I'm taking you on this journey with me. All right, here we go. So these are my author copies. And it is The Minister, The Ministry, and Me. Whoa. That's the first time I've ever seen this with a cover on it. This is awesome. All right. It's available. All right, guys, I'm really excited. Um, this is a huge bucket list thing for me just to, to finish this book, put a cover on it, make it available to everybody um, in a professional format. So I'm going to look at it for the first time and take you on that tour. So if you're a nerd about this kind of thing, um, stick with me. I'll give you a little tour of the book and uh, show you what you can expect from um, this final copy of the book. All right, so it's a discipleship resource. Um, it's really a book you can read on your own, but I really wanted to design the book for you to read together in a group and ask some hard questions. All right, but first let me give a shout out to my friend Tony Monto. Uh, thank you so much for letting me put your name on the back of the book. And same thing with Wally Kurtz, um, just a good, good friends of mine that were willing to read my book throughout and say something about it for me. So there we go. That's it. The minister of the ministry of me. So I'll read the back cover for you guys. It says the minister of the ministry of me invites you and your leadership team to be encouraged and challenged in your service to God and his bride, the church. In this book, J.N. Wheels gives straightforward and easy to understand advice to those who desire to serve in ministry in any capacity. Each chapter ends with questions for group discussion or personal reflection. Be ready to make disciples who make disciples. All right, I'll give everybody the first peek inside. So. Oh, Tony, Wally. Look at, you made it on the inside too. Oh, I got more shout outs to give here. I also have shout outs to give to, oh, upcoming books. Nancy Dale for editing this book. And then my good friend, Vanessa Cruz. She's the one that took my uh, author photo and let me use it. So thank you so much, Vanessa. All right, so where were we? I'm going to record, I haven't done this yet. I'm going to record some podcast video episodes for each chapter to the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So one of the coolest things um, about this book is Nancy Deo, my new friend and editor, the one who helped me edit this book and format it. She put an exhaustive um, table of contents at the front of this book. And I really had to fight um, for that, to keep that in there with the publisher. And we got it in there and it looks like this. So as you're reading in a group, um, it, this makes reading in a group so much more fun and easy. So you've got the chapters. So the first one's the necessity of discipleship. And as you'll see, um, as you get into this book, got some quotes there at the beginning of each chapter. Uh, they, they made it look really cool. So chapter one is the, the preface. Um, and then I really had to fight to just make sure it was formatted with the um, Bible verses that I wanted to go with each chapter to be on the left side of the introduction to the chapter. So um, something I thought was really cool. Uh, I had that in some of my favorite books, I think from a couple books from Warren Wiersbe, Oswald Sanders um, had their chapters start like that. And I thought that was really cool. Hey, Abby, can you, can you, can you quiet? Um, so I did the same, but anyways, about the exhaustive table of contents. So within my, my chapters, there's these subheadings. What are we here for? Um, the purpose of your calling almost in like every other paragraph. Okay. Now we're saved. What for? Are we willing to make disciples? Um, so in the table of contents, 
you can actually find each one of those subheadings in the table of contents. So what are we here for? Gives you the page. How is um, God accomplish, accomplishing his mission? Now we're saved, what for? Page eight. So the whole purpose behind that is so if you're reading this in a group um, and you just go, hey, where is that? Well, you know, what are you talking about? If someone's giving a comment, they can just find it real easily um, within those um, subheadings within the chapter. So I like short books. I know I say this all the time, but John Piper said, books don't change people, paragraphs do. And I, I really believe that. You don't have to write a textbook in order to make an impact on someone's life. So good questions that if you are a leadership team or a pastoral team, or if you're um, wondering if you're called to ministry and you're kind of counting the cost of the, what that might look like, maybe you look like it looks like lay leadership. You know, you work a job, build, make a tent, and um, you serve in the church in some capacity, in some way, or if you are vocationally um, pursuing the ministry as a, as a full-time um, job, you have questions like this. So questions worth pondering. Um, what might God's mission look like in your fellowship? What are your thoughts on bring, disciple, multiply, theological, sacrificial, relational, missional? Are you a disciple? What does a disciple look like, act like? Are you willing to make disciples? How can you make disciples graciously and lovingly? So the purpose of the questions is really to go, you know, we need to make sure we're accountable to one another um, as men and women in the church and especially as leadership in the church. Let's be accountable to one another and let's sit around and give everybody a voice to ask questions. Easy questions, hard questions. Um, let's put it all on the table and help each other grow, but also make sure that as a church and as a leadership team that you are remaining accountable um, to one another and to the Lord, evaluating one another, being honest with one another. All right, so back to the little tour. So um, in the table of contents, it's a nice, nice, creamy, easy on the eyes um, color as far as the pages. Um, as far as the contents are concerned, let me give you a little tour of that. So um, chapter one is the preface. It's just me introducing myself in the book. Um, chapter two is the necessity of discipleship. Um, originally two and three in old versions had been one chapter and I broke them up into two. Um, so what are we here for? The purpose of your calling? How is God accomplishing his mission? Um, okay, now we're saved. What for? Are we willing to become disciples? and goes talks about some problems in the church and solutions. So in a book for ministers and leaders and um, people who aspire to serve in the ministry in any capacity, um, first couple chapters are about discipleship. So it seems kind of basic, but it actually goes pretty deep into what a disciple is. And um, what I love about that is just going, you know, let's test each other. Let's, let's encourage one another. Let's examine ourselves in light of the scriptures and answer that question, you know, first and foremost, if I'm going to serve Jesus in the church, am I a disciple of Jesus Christ first and foremost? Chapter two is a great commission vision. So uh, we talk about theology and worship as theology, um, music as worship, teaching and theology, and then to give a vision um, for the church um, of sacrificial, relational, missional, and then bringing people to Jesus, discipling them Jesus, and then multiplying ourselves and continuing on that mission and spreading the gospel um, throughout the earth. Practicalities, I go through a ton of practicality. And that's really what this book is about, is as you're examining yourself in light of the scriptures, um, you know, this book was really designed to help pastors raise up future ministers in the church and help kind of speed that process along. So <clears throat> it could take years to disciple somebody just on the nuances of, uh, uh, of ministry and serving in your church context, whether that's a house church, whether that's um, you, you serve in a building. Um, I go over a lot of practicalities on how you can talk through things and disciple someone with the practicalities of ministry. And that leads to you know what some good questions from that chapter. Um, how might Satan tempt you in the ministry? In what ways might your pride need to be put in check? What are some practical things, processes, logistics, etc., that your church and leadership team are good at? And in what ways can you and your ministry team improve practically? So again, some things to talk about. The next chapter, chapter five, is the paid minister. What might this look like? Laziness happens. You were hired to serve people. Be the servant's servant. 
And then this chapter only has a couple of questions, but I think they're really good, especially in a group discipleship setting. If you are a paid minister, did you know what to expect before you entered that role? In other words, did anyone prepare you for the life of full-time ministry? And then what advice would you give to an aspiring full-time minister? So I think that could give you a, a good something to talk about for quite a while um, as a team or even individually to ponder or as if you're an individual a young man um, to go to the older men in your church and say hey you know how would you answer these questions um, and you get some really good answers that would be very very helpful probably my favorite um, chapter for ministers in this book is called friends don't miss out friendship is beautiful ingredients the cost of friendship do you have a friend friendship material pastors beware of the michael jackson complex jesus had friends in reality this one michael jackson um, i do give a shout out to uh, brian broderson in that in that uh, chapter from our romans class but i'll tell you this is this is my favorite chapter in this book um, called friends about friendship we go over how jesus called his disciples he said no longer do i do i call you servants but i call you friends and we talk about friendship biblically from the Bible and what friendship might look like and why the necessity of friendship, why we need friends. So um, I really had a heart for this chapter just because it's been my experience in watching people in the ministry. Um, there's a lot of loneliness and I've seen a lot of loneliness and a lot of friendlessness, which also breeds lack of true, um, genuine accountability in the ministry and we're also seeing a lot of people struggling with mental illness and depression and anxiety and we're seeing a lot of pastors committing suicide nowadays and i think one of the ingredients to prevent that is of course closeness to jesus but also developing um, true close friendships um, in in your lives so to give you a little preview on that, uh, some of the questions at the end of that friendship chapter are, what are some of the benefits of having true friends? Do you have one or two friends with whom you experience genuine fellowship? Are you able to love, trust, and confide in these friends? Are you able to confess your faults, failures, and sins to your friends with full trust and confidentiality? And if you don't have friends, are you willing to be a friend and make friends? So. Ask the hard question, do you have friends? If not, why? And are you willing to make friends? So it's not too late to start on that journey. And I kind of try to really encourage you and push you on that journey of making friends. We talk about the need to be servants on and waiter please, that chapter, chapter seven. And then your love with Jesus, how we're all cracked pots, yet we still need that quality time with Jesus. And then the last chapter, Again, seems kind of basic, but why I love the Word of God. Do you still believe the Bible? Duh, we're church people. So why do we need the Word of God? Um, holy and inspired, profitable words. The Word of God is for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. Again, just like I started very basic, obviously, if you're going to serve the Bride of Christ, you're going to serve in the ministry full-time or part-time as a layperson or vocationally, of course, we started the book, you need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And then I end the book going, but do you still believe in the Word of God? Um, so we're seeing a lot of people in the church, the church, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of leaven in the church with people who are not disciples, not holding themselves accountable to friends and those in the church, um, which is the purpose of why this is really good as a group book, also good for individuals. But then also at the I end the book with the Word of God. We're seeing a lot of people who no longer believe that the Word of God, the Bible, is God's infallible words and instructions for our lives and for the ministry and so um, you guys thank you so much for watching this tour of my book you guys can find it at jnwheels.com um, and then if you do read it i'd love it if you left a review on um, amazon barnes and noble and at westbow press so thank you so much guys love you thank you so much for watching this video talk to you soon bye